Hi, I'm Josh, and I'm so grateful that you have decided to join me as I talk about one of my new very favorite books of all time, Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. This is a book that seems like everybody on booktube has been talking about over the past several months, including KC from the channel Lost in a Bookcase. And when KC talked about it, I commented on her video and said, I'm a already a very anxious person who suffers from anxiety. I don't know if I want to read a book called Anxious People. And she replied and said, I think you would just really find it to be very funny. And not only was she dead on with that, but she didn't tell me the half of it because this book really surprised me in a number of ways. So let me get into that. The other thing that really took me by surprise was I was telling one of my brothers about this book and how much I enjoyed it. And he said to me, oh, I actually interviewed the author recently. And I said, what? Are you kidding me? The author, I think, is from Sweden and we're here in Canada. And it turns out that Frederick Bachman was in Canada and the Kitchener Public Library here in Southern Ontario decided that they would invite him in and do an interview. And they invited my brother to be the interviewer for this discussion about his book, Bear Town. So, my brother got to have a conversation with Frederick Bachman. He said that Frederick Bachman was just the nicest, sweetest, funniest guy you could ever imagine. And I thought, that's so amazing. That makes me like the book all that much more. And this book pretty much had me right from the very beginning with the dedication before the book even started. Because the author says, This book is dedicated to the voices in my head, the most remarkable of my friends and to my wife who lives with us. <laughs> so I thought, this is somebody who I'm gonna really enjoy. And that turned out to be the case. In terms of a very brief plot synopsis, as with most books, the less you know going in, the better it is. So I'm just gonna very briefly say that the book is about a bank robbery that has gone wrong and hostages have been taken. The book opens up sort of after the fact with the police who are investigating this whole situation and they're trying to get some questions answered about what exactly went down during this hostage taking. They're interviewing all the people that were involved and trying to piece together the story. And so that's what's happening throughout the book. You're gradually getting the whole story filled in about this hostage taking situation. So from a very basic plot point of view, that's what the book covers. Before I get into some more specifics here about other themes and what the book is actually about, let me just take a quick second to give a very big thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially to my higher tier supporters, Joanna, Paul, and Mojo. It just means a lot to me that you're willing to support me in that way. I am working through a Patreon exclusive series of videos where I talk about my life and how I ended up on disability and how things really kind of broke down on me over time. I think that's going to end up being a four video series and there's two videos out for Patreon supporters right now. So if you want to check that out, feel free to sign up for my Patreon, watch the videos and then cancel your support if you feel like it. It's totally up to you. I'm not going to judge you. But anyways, this book, Anxious People, is about people. It's about a lot of different people and one of the types of people it's about, as we are told in the very opening paragraph, is that this book is about idiots, but with the following caveat. It says, this story is about a lot of things, but mostly about idiots. So it needs saying from the outset that it's always very easy to declare that other people are idiots, but only if you forget how idiotically difficult being human is. So right from the outset, we're being encouraged to empathize with people that we consider to be idiotic. Now, it should come as no surprise that another type of person this book is about is anxious people. I found this quote to be sadly true. Unfortunately, I think most people would still get more sympathy from their colleagues and bosses at work if they show up looking rough one morning and say, I'm hungover, than if they say, I'm suffering from anxiety. And totally brings to mind a quote from the amazing late comedian Mitch Hedberg and his joke was as follows alcoholism is a disease but it's the only one you can get yelled at for having god damn it Otto you are an alcoholic god damn it Otto you have lupus one of those two doesn't sound right another type of person this book is about is adults 
Because the terrible thing about becoming an adult is being forced to realize that absolutely nobody cares about us. We have to deal with everything ourselves now. Find out how the whole world works. Work and pay bills, use dental floss and get to meetings on time, stand in line and fill out forms, come to grips with cables and put furniture together, change tires on the car and charge the phone and switch the coffee machine off and not forget to sign the kids up for swimming lessons. We open our eyes in the morning and life is just waiting to tip a fresh avalanche of don't forgets and remembers over us. We don't have time to think or breathe. We just wake up and start digging through the heap because there will be another one dumped on us tomorrow. Yet another type of person this book is about is parents. Parenthood can lead to a sequence of years when the children's feelings suck all the oxygen out of a family. And that can be so emotionally intense that some adults go for years without having an opportunity to tell anyone about their own feelings. And if you don't get a chance for long enough, sometimes you simply forget how to do it. That certainly hits home with all the health issues I've struggled with in the years I've been a parent. Here's another funny thought about parenthood. Jim, the older police officer in the story here, was born in a generation that regarded computers as magic. Jack, the younger police officer, in one that has always taken them for granted. When Jim was young, children used to be punished by being sent to their rooms, but these days you have to force children to come out of them. One generation got told off for not being able to sit still, the next gets told off for never moving. Yeah, I can definitely relate to the older generation officer there. Other specific people we learn about are psychologists versus psychiatrists. A character named Zara is talking to her psychologist. Zara countered at once with a question of her own. Will this be psychiatry or psychology? The psychologist asked, what do you think the difference is? Zara replied, you need psychology if you think you're a dolphin. You need psychiatry if you've killed all the dolphins. The psychologist looked uncomfortable. The next time they met, she wasn't wearing her dolphin brooch. Staying in the workplace, another type of person we talk about are leaders. One of the characters is talking about her role as a boss in her workplace. She says, yes, I was, not that I wanted that, to be a boss, I mean. The president of the company said that was precisely why he wanted me to do it. He said, you don't have to lead by telling other people what to do. You can lead by just letting them do what they're capable of instead. So I tried to be a teacher more than a boss. I know people find it hard to believe of me, but I'm not a bad teacher. When I retired, two of my staff said they hadn't realized I was actually their boss until they heard the speech thanking me for my work. I thought, what a great comment on leadership that is, just helping people to do what they are capable of doing. Anxious People also talks a fair bit about lower income folks. Once again, Zara is talking to her psychologist and she asks her psychologist, do you own an apartment? Yes. Have you got a mortgage on it? Hasn't everyone? No, and a mortgage used to be something that you were expected to repay. But now that every other middle income family has a mortgage for an amount they couldn't possibly save up in their lifetimes, then the bank isn't lending money anymore. It's offering financing. And then homes are no longer homes, they're investments. I'm not sure I completely understand what that means. It means that the poor get poorer, the rich get richer, and the real class divide is between those who can borrow money and those who can't. Because no matter how much money anyone earns, they still lie awake at the end of the month worrying about money. That really hits home because in the wake of my wife leaving me and going through the legal separation process, I'm trying desperately not to lose my home and I'm not sure if I'm going to win that battle. So yeah, trying to borrow money when you're on disability it is a daunting process and <laughs> it is funny that the more money you have, the easier it is to borrow money when the more money you need, the less easier it is to actually get it. And when I say funny, I mean that in a depressing way, of course. Another type of people we talk about are people on the internet. If there's one thing modern life and the internet have taught us, it's that you should never expect to win a discussion simply because you're right. Which leads nicely into the next quote here. This one is talking about people who criticize, which somehow reminds me of people on the internet. It says, nothing is easier for people who never do anything themselves than to criticize someone who actually makes an effort. All you YouTubers out there, I'm sure are very familiar with this concept. People who have never created a video in their lives have no idea what goes into scripting and recording and editing and all that stuff, who have nasty comments to say to people who do do all that work. And the last type of people, that we talk about here are people who are spiritually curious. The truth. There isn't any. All we've managed to find out about the boundaries of the universe is that it hasn't got any. And all we know about God is that we don't know anything. 
That's about the truest statement about God I've ever read. But let's leave people behind for now, just as the universe will one day do. Have you ever thought about how vegans always talk about saving the planet as if the planet needed you? The planet will survive for billions of years, even without human help. The only people we're killing are ourselves. <laughs> Certainly an interesting twist on the environmental movement if we consider the fact that no, we're not really saving the planet. Because like I said, the planet's going to be here for several billion more years. It's us that we're saving when we actually try to work to improve the environment around us and to try to save the world from destruction. So yes, all that was fantastic. But here's what the book is really, really about. And here's why anxious people surprised me. Because I was expecting a whimsical, funny, lighthearted read when I started into the book. And I did get that, but I also got some much deeper discussions too. And I think the primary theme that is kind of woven throughout the whole story is one of dealing with suicide and suicidal ideations. And so obviously the one trigger warning I would give to anybody regarding this book is one of suicide. In fact, Frederick Bachman, at the end of the book, with the author's thanks, the very first person he thanks is a friend of his who died by suicide. And then woven together with the suicidal ideations and all that stuff is dealing with loved ones, with marriage, and with loss of loved ones. So these things combined hit me like a ton of bricks because Well, I don't want to get into specifics on this topic. I'm a pretty open book in general on YouTube, but this is one area that I don't feel comfortable talking about. Um, I'll just say that when my wife left me a year and a half or so ago, even before that happened, I was in a pretty dark place with all my illness and disability and stuff. And after that happened, or since that has happened, I should say, uh, it's got unimaginably worse. So these are themes that spoke to me on the deepest personal level. Let me just read a couple of quotes. She tried to be a good mom, even though she didn't have an instruction manual. A good wife, a good employee, a good person. She was terrified of failing every second of every day, but she did genuinely believe that everything was going well for a while. Fairly well, anyway. She relaxed. She wasn't prepared. So infidelity and divorce hit her hard in the back of the head. Life knocked her flat. And then... It's so odd, he thought, that still, after all this time, it feels so incomprehensible that she isn't here. That his heart hasn't gotten used to the fact that no giggling idiot is going to stick her finger in his mouth when he yawns, or pour flour in his pillowcase just as he's about to go to bed. No one to argue with him, love him. There's no getting used to the grammar of it at all. And then this. The worst thing a divorce does to a person isn't that it makes all the time you devoted to the relationship feel wasted, but that it steals all the plans you had for the future. Which leads to this next quote here. She was thinking that the worst thing of all, the most impossible thing to reconcile herself to emotionally, was the fact that she still loved her husband. Every blood vessel felt like it was exploding every time that realization struck her. That she couldn't stop loving him, not even after everything he'd done. Not even then could she stop herself wondering if it had all been her fault. And then the final quote on this subject. We need to be allowed to convince ourselves that we're more than the mistakes we made yesterday. That we are all of our next choices too. All of our tomorrows. So, as you can see, Yes, this book is an easy to read book. It's written in a very light and approachable style, but it has a lot to say about people, the human condition, and about the darkest aspects that we struggle with. So that's what really blew me away about anxious people. The mixture of laughter and tears and the kind of interesting mystery that's kind of woven through everything too. So what do I rate anxious people? I give it a perfect score of 10 out of 10. To me, this book is perfection and it is definitely in the top 10 novels I have ever read in my life. 
Have you read it? What did you think of it? Do tell me in the comments. I would love to carry on the discussion below. And if not, just tell me what you're reading right now. That's something I'm always curious about. Thanks for joining me for this today. Hey, it's Josh. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you could consider doing one of the following things, I would appreciate it. Give me a thumb up, subscribe to my channel. If you've already subscribed, hit that notification bell or share the link to the video with somebody who you think would enjoy it. During this host, if you want to check, cancel your... <laughs> Yet another type of person this book is about is... And also staying in the workplace, we also see that leaders are talked about. When I retired, I know which leads next, which leads nicely into the next. In fact, Frederick Bachman in 